right, next up we're going to um, poke some holes in, um, in these pieces here. And we're going to use uh, symmetry again to our, to our advantage here. Make sure I'm in the right place. <laughs> So we're just going to um, do a little spot drilling. It'll start to make more sense when Sometimes moving the part is is faster than moving the the machine to a new coordinate. So on parts that have some symmetry to them, they, you can take advantage of that that uh, quality. Got to be careful though. <laughs> Got to be really careful. Ask me how I know that. I've screwed up. I've screwed up every way that you can probably screw up on stuff like this. All right. These holes will be counterboard here. All we have to do is do the counterbore from the right side. We're going to cut these, um, these little scallops here and I'm going to start with this uh, annular cutter. Uh, you can do this with a boring head and in fact we're going to finish them with a boring head um, but I'm just going to take most of the material out with, uh, um, with this uh, annular cutter and then I'll come in with a, a boring head and uh, cut the correct radius in there. Um, which is just slightly larger. This is 1 in 15 16 I think and it's a two inch, rate, uh, two inch diameter uh, uh, that we need. Let's see. Like that. I'm sure I'm clamped well. And these are uh, these are nice because they uh, they don't care whether they uh, they cut a half a hole or. A a portion of a hole or whatever and they make quick work out of it you'll 
see here. She even looks okay. And all these um, scallops do is when we have the uh, the knob, it allows a little bit of clearance to grip the knob uh, and rotate the knob. So I'll just turn this one around like so. Reclamp and off we go again. And I'm just hand feeding this. You can feed it with the power feed too. Yeah, if you haven't tried these annular cutters, you know, you see them, you know, for a reasonable price, get a few. Because they're really nice for this kind of stuff here. And you may have noticed I have the second one over here, and that's just to stabilize the setup a little bit here. Because um, we're clamping something skinny right to the. Uh, make sure I don't trap any chips. All right, so we're kind of ready to go here. Um, the way you set the radius here is you you know where the spindle center line is, right? So you move off of a known edge that's that's a zero datum, and then you run the boring tool over in in neutral, like so, and you 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 adjust the boring head until you just scratch a line in some sharpie, and then you know that the the radius that the boring head is sweeping is correct. And then what we're going to do here is now we're positioned over the, the center of the desired radius and you can see that it's going to take a little cut right there. So we should be good to go here. It's a little, I think I'm going to try it in one, in one shot and see, see how it works here. Put some uh, liquid love on there. And a little more speed here. Let's see how it behaves here. Feels pretty good. Yeah, I think it's fine. The finish looks good. That's kind of what I really care about. In this case, is the finish. I might slow the feed rate down just a little bit. Shut the feed off, and then I'm going to stop it and and then bring it back up because I don't want it to leave a. Oh yeah, that's a nice finish. I don't want it to leave a little spiral mark uh, coming back up. And then we just do the same thing. Turn that around and push it up to the stop. Lock her down. Okay. And I'm just rotating it around so I can get close to the start of the cut. Like that. Engage the feed. And you don't need a boring head to do this. You can do it with a fly cutter and then you can just move the tool bit. Uh, to the correct radius uh, using the same method. So we're putting this uh, we're putting this chamfer on this uh, this radius here, and uh, we're using a tool in the boring head that's got a. I'll swing it around so you can see it here in a sec. 
this in neutral and then you can see it so it's just a tool bit that's welded to a shank here uh, you can weld high speed to stainless or steel uh, when you need to make something like this uh, it's pretty straightforward so what we're doing in this case is we don't want to down feed with the quill what we're going to do is up feed with the knee uh, in this case because uh, it's just does we get a smoother uh, a smoother feed And it's just a little steadier. There's a big burr on there right now that's gonna knock out, there it goes. Looking at the, the dial, I don't want it to chatter at the last bit there. I'm just going to go real slow on the last bit. Uh, okay, and then back it off before it, oops, before it squeaks on me. Okay, I get that out of the way. couple more and uh, we got that. This next one we're going to do here is uh, this the nut. Uh, that's what I'm calling it. And that's this bit right here uh, in the assembly. It's right here, number five. Um, and this is actually threaded for the, uh, the knob here. And it fits into a little recess here in the V-block. Okay. Um, you know, and you can see it's a small piece. Now, it's got a kind of an interesting setup problem, and, and I think I mentioned that I uh, that I've used this as a uh, uh, well, it was designed as a uh, kind of a training um, um, project, and uh, so this small piece has some little some little angles on it, okay, and uh, kind of like that, right? Little reliefs underneath and it's kind of an oddball angle and it could be almost any angle uh, it's kind of the angles irrelevant it's just to make it look more interesting okay and that's all um, and let's see do I have a yeah, I think right here. you can see here it's just so that it looks more interesting in there right you know it could be straight I just didn't want an edge a straight edge I wanted these these corners to kind of come together right uh, and then still leave some some meat in the middle too okay so it ends up being this oddball angle uh, in fact I found a mistake on this uh, that I had made um, so the angle is here and it's uh, 088 by 200 which is 23.75 degrees like I said it's kind of irrelevant it could be 30 degrees and it'd be fine or it could be 20 degrees and probably be fine too okay but we're going to go ahead and do it at the uh, the angle that I set it up at, okay? And I'm going to show you a couple different ways to set it up. That's what I'm getting to here with all this yapping. And um, um, several choices if uh, um, that you can make uh, on how to hold this piece so that we can mill that, uh, mill that little angle off. So we're going to show kind of um, from the simplest... I don't know, the simplest to the most complex? I don't know. I'm just going to show some different ways to do this. So functionally what we're doing is we're going to we're going to hold this part at a little angle like this and then we're going to mill that off. That's what we're going to do. And what I've done is, uh, and you won't be able to see it, there's a little scribe line that's uh, a hundred thousandths off of this edge which matches 
the, the step in the V block that we're doing. Um, so that's my guideline as to how far down I'm going to take that angle. But we have to fixture this at the right angle. And ideally, since we got one, two, four corners to do, that it's a little setup and we can drop them in there and just repeat the operation, right? That's kind of the thought. Now, the, you know, you can buy tools till you're blue in the face, but a lot of these things you can do with, with very simple tools. This is probably one of the more simple ones, okay, is you just use this and then we can set that at that angle. And these are actually pretty accurate, you know, if you use a magnifier and set these, it's pretty good, okay. Now, you might go, oh, well, how the hell am I going to hold that up, right? Well, okay, let's extend that a little bit. Let me grab a, a parallel of some height. It's got a little bit of height. Yeah, that's probably about right. Okay, so we drop that in there like that. Let's just go ahead and pin that up there. Oops, pin that up there with that. Okay, make sure I got this going the right way. Like that. Okay, you're starting to see the picture. Okay, and um, now I would probably use a parallel that's a little thinner or I'd use a block across the top to, to, to catch that. Actually, I'd probably use a, a parallel that's a little shorter in this case. Okay, so that's one way you can hold hold that part, right? So you can do something like this and uh, and clamp that part, okay? Okay, so that's one way, super simple. If you don't have a, uh, a selection of these little protractors, um, get some, they're pretty handy uh, for double checking uh, sign bar setups and things like that. So uh, just measuring tool angles, that kind of stuff. Okay, number two, what's number two? What was I gonna do? Oh, number two, is um where is that uh, let me get number two going here hold on all right number two now remember i've i've tapped these um uh, these mounting screws just for these kinds of uh silly little operations like this where you end up uh, doing weird stuff so we're just gonna kind of get a parallel going here and i can still move it right so that's pretty close still Oh, actually, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not, not going to use that. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this silly thing here. That's what I, I forgot. This is number two. We're going to turn that on. Hopefully, you guys can. I don't know if you can see that, but what this has the ability is I can I can set a zero anywhere. Okay. All right. So there it's zeroed. Now I'm just going to attach it to that. I'm 11.4. They say it was 23.75, right? 22. 23. 2. 6, 7, 8. 9. Let's go back a little bit. 8. Seven. Okay, so I don't think this thing reads in. Okay, so I just lock that down, and now we can put that in there like so. And what I probably do in this case here is do something like this. So I had a little um, a little repeat stopper there, right? Just to give me a, a repeatable stop, okay, and then uh, and then clamp her up like that, okay. Now this head's sticking out, so we need to we need to put something across there like that. But then that gives you access to uh, to do that work, right? These are these are actually pretty good, um, and they're handy for little quick setups like this. They're nine bucks or something like that. On uh, actually, this one came from Harbor Freight. I think it was a little more than that, but. Uh, uh, Electronic level with the ability to to set a reference zero right uh, is is actually a pretty handy tool. Okay, so let's uh, let me get going for number three. I'll show you the the third and final way we're going to do this. So I'm a big fan of uh, of sign bars, and this is I think I showed these on a meatloaf a while back. These are some swag 
items that I had laser cut, uh, and these will be these are actually available for sale, um, and they're five bucks a piece. Okay, so that's pretty cheap, right? <laughs> so, but it's actually a pretty damn good sign bar. I checked them on camera, I think, and um, the um, they're pretty darn accurate. I was uh, uh, surprised um, how well they came out, and uh, so. Never feel like a sign bar is, uh, let's go this way here, um, is too accurate for the job. They're so simple to set up. That's the uh, one of their great uh, beauties, or the power of these, right? Now, I've already done all the calculations, so, um, um, and, you know, you take the sign of the angle and you multiply it by the, uh, the roll distance, and in this case, it's five inches, and this is, particularly set up to work in a um, um, tool room vise like this. And you don't need gauge blocks under this end. So what I generally use uh, for, you know, run of the mill work, or it's not super fussy accurate, is I use adjustable parallels, which you can measure over with a micrometer. Now in this case, I need a little bit more than uh, I get out of that. So this is already set, just to save time here on the video. All right, so make sure that's bearing nice. All right, so there's my, my little weird angle, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I got this little insert vise, which is actually a real sweetheart for holding a little, uh, little crud like this. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm just gonna use a, a little stopper on the end here to, to set the, uh... and this is my only complaint about these kind of vices is the little, the little chingus always drops out of the, the chingus. Oh, come on, see that? It's just, it's just a, a bad, needs to be locked in there better. Okay. All right, so now I got it. I got the plunger in there now. Okay, so I'll reference that end. Okay, crank that down. And then um, just to help support the, uh, um, the vise here, drop it in there like so, and then I'll slide down until I'm sitting on the parallel, and there we go. Bob's your uncle. Now, you can also use the level, because um, this vise is magnetic, you can use it right on, right on the vise, so you could just, you don't need all this other business, you can just twist this until you read the angle, and then peel that off and off you go. So we can access that now and then we can flip it around without disturbing our setup and uh, and do all four of those sides which we're going to do here in a minute after I quit talking. Okay we got our cool little our fun little setup here and uh, let's uh, see if we can screw something up here. Now I'm going to I'm going to go at this I'm going to go at this pretty easy you know, we don't have a we don't have a death grip on this thing, okay? So I'm gonna be pretty mellow here. Or mellower than my normal uh, my normal self. So what I'm what I'm looking for is this flat that I'm creating to to just eat that line that I've uh, scribed on there. And uh, I'm gonna need my my old man magnifiers here. Yeah, I got a little bit to go there. Okay, and then I'm, I'm gonna zero the quill, and then I'm just gonna. Okay. 
All right, now let me uh, flip that around and we'll, uh, we'll do that again. I chickened out, I used an L wrench on it. <laughs> I was uh, just gonna use the um, screwdriver type. Make sure it didn't move, but I kind of chickened out. <laughs> They go for it in one whack? What do you think? Yeah. It looks like it's uh, hitting my drive line. Wonders never cease, huh? Looks like I might, might even have you guys faked out that I know what I'm doing, huh? Okay. All right. All right. So there's our there's our little angle angle of the dangle there. Okay. All right. Let me do the other one, and then uh, we'll poke a hole in the middle of that. So I had to get out the uh, the thin parallels there because um, we're tapping a quarter inch, the parallels are eighth, my normal parallels are eighth, and that's a half inch wide, so you're you're right knocking on the door there, asking for trouble. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna put this one on the other side here, just for fun, because I got two of them. Oh yeah, okay, so I'm in the right spot, yep. I'm not going to center drill because I got a I got a good stub drill here. Okay, this drill feels kind of dull to me. You know what? I, mean, I don't think I have any more uh, number three uh, stub drills. Now you gotta be a little bit careful when you're working with uh, these thin parallels. It's it's really easy because there's not much of an edge there to uh, to get your part caught on the edge of the parallel. So just be aware of that that problem, and um, you know before you tighten that vise up fully because it'll put a nasty mark in your part. And how do I know that? <laughs> I saw somebody do it once. Yeah, still in the right place. Wonders never cease. I'm gonna sharpen that drill too. It felt kind of dull. Liquid love there. 